Hello and welcome to Marketplace Africa. I'm Robin Kerno here in Johannesburg. Now this is the show where we're going to be profiling all the industry leaders and bringing you up to date with all the latest business news each week. In focus this week is Nigeria where style never seems to go out of fashion. Christian Purefoy spends time with a top designer there to find out why the Nigerian fashion business is still a thriving industry. Whipping up a storm. Very good. All eyes are on the Nigerian fashion industry as it struts its stuff on catwalks and magazines from to Paris and New York. Whatever we throw it in our design, that's <laughs> the ethnicity made globally friendly is what makes Nigerian um, design stand out. From her factory in Lagos, designers like Folake, Folar and Coca and her use of bold statements and local flavor are grabbing the attention of the international fashion community. And is the only African-based designer to have shown twice at the New York Fashion Week and was awarded Designer of the Year last year in South Africa. But Falar and Coca is not losing sight of her home market, the rich Nigerian elite. Right now, my clientele is normally between the age of 30 to 45. On average, we, we tend to be bigger than what we were when we were 25. So women are, the women are always looking for clothes to flatter them and at the same time, sexy. The roots of Nigerian fashion can be found in any local market. A length of cloth will cost you about $20 and a tailor to fit it about another $20. And it means that everyone here is their own personal designer. And the resulting array of styles provides a huge pool of inspiration for all of Nigeria's budding designers. The fashion industry here has grown with the country's booming entertainment industry. Actresses, musicians and businessmen all want to look good for tomorrow's gossip magazines. Bola Atta runs one of the country's biggest fashion magazines. Since its launch five years ago, True Love estimates its readership is now at 150,000. But the secret to the industry's success, she says, is that it doesn't just want to impress Nigerians. I have come to the conclusion that we do not want it to be completely ethnic. Um, African print is in right now, um, but I think we still want a mix of Western. Why? Because that's what you see on TV. The TV sort of influences everything that you do. You watch the um, Oscars red carpet, you want that dress, it's not got any print on it, but you want it, um, and it looks fabulous. And with a population of 150 million, the potential for growth in Nigeria is huge. However, the price tag for most of the designs remains too costly for most people. I mean, when we do fashion shoots, we might actually pick the most expensive pieces. And what I tell people is, we're not saying go out and buy that. We're just saying get inspired by it. Falar and Coca is planning to release a new, cheaper line for the mass market. But with more upcoming designers and competition, this maturing fashion market is no longer all just about the clothes. It's, it's power of branding. Before this leaves my factory, it could have been made by anybody. But once you put the label on it, it becomes, there's a whole different story. People want to see themselves in an item, in, in a clothing when they buy it. But they also want the, um, the glam that comes with it. I mean, everything we do in this industry, in the fashion industry, is to make people fall in love with our brand. The trick now is to make sure the rest of the world falls in love with it as well. Christian Purefoy, CNN, Lagos, Nigeria. Now those designs cost between $300 and $3,000 each. Now, a new survey by MasterCard shows that Nigerians are the only Africans who plan to increase rather than decrease their discretionary spending over the next six months. And also, interestingly, fashion and accessories are a top spending priority for more than 35% of Africans. Unfortunately, I think my MasterCard might reflect that too. Really next up, we sit down with the man behind the mobile phone giant MTN and we ask him about doing business inside and outside Africa. We'll hear his answer shortly.